Today we're shooting hybrid photo video coverage of a wedding day and there is no formal photo session. Everything is candid, which might seem like a dream, but it's actually probably the most challenging wedding that I've ever shot. Come see how we do. Taylor Jackson. Shooting 67 weddings last year. Taylor Jackson, welcome. So Taylor, you are well known in this community. You're an amazing photographer. To my new husband. I have lived a life with more love and happiness than most people get to know in a whole lifetime. But being loved by you has been the greatest privilege I've ever known. That's why I like video. I've already told an incredible story and all you've really seen is building exteriors and a couple makeup shots. Uh, the full highlight film is actually at the end of the video. You can watch it now or you can watch it later. Now on to the wedding day. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the wedding day. Today, Tim and I are going to be doing both photo and video coverage, and you're gonna be on my 360 camera, which I think is gonna be a better way for me to actually show you the LCD of how I actually record the videos and the settings on that, because that's something that I haven't been able to do in the past. Also, an interesting part of this wedding day is that we're doing no formal photography session. It's actually a thing that I've been seeing more and more often. A lot of my couples are uh, kind of over the, just all the groomsmen stand like this and have their photo taken. So they just don't do that anymore. Um, this is the third wedding that I've been to uh, within 12 months that has done that. And I have at least two more coming up this year. So if that gives you any sort of predictions into maybe the future of wedding photography, or if that's just specifically my style of couple and what they're looking for. So again, wedding photography is all about attracting exactly your specific type of bride and groom or groom and groom or bride and bride um, in order to create the best work possible. Because I feel that when I'm when I'm out here shooting for people like Laura and Kevin, who I get along with really well, and you actually saw the uh, behind the scenes of their engagement shoot where we sat at a tiny little table. Um, when you get along with people really, really well, I find that you just do a heck of a lot better when it comes to the actual photo work. Um, not that you're not trying as hard on other days, it's just the way everything comes together and the final product is always just better. So something to think about if you're not yet attracting your ideal couples, figure out how to make your website and your entire social presence something that really just connects with you. Um, I find that marketing to myself uh, as somebody that would potentially be getting married is the best and easiest way to do it. Uh, that way I end up at weddings with people that I really, really get along with and love. So let's go take some photos. Party car. I'll be honest, I was a little bit nervous going into this wedding day. I usually get pretty much everything you've ever seen on Instagram during either the sunset session or some sort of kind of forced candid photojournalistic moment. Uh, it's very, very rare that I do my best work in straight candid format. Um, but today, that's all I got. So we ended up actually getting like a 35 second photo session with a couple and one shot with the wedding party that you'll eventually see. Also, all these images were edited with my subtle preset. It is up on Patreon right now. So if you want to go over to Patreon, it went up yesterday. So July 2nd, uh, you can get it. Everything that you're going to see is edited with either that or my black and white preset. I knew that this was not going to be a great video shot just because of the lighting. So I focused specifically on photo. Tim at this moment is off with the guys doing some photo and video coverage. Photography, you can fix bad light. You can make it look a little bit better or you can black and white if you don't have good color uh, but for video to add just a black and white shot in the middle of a film really doesn't come together well so I focus on what's going to work and then kind of work within the bounds and the means that I'm given um, on the wedding day. Here's a quick catch up of where we're at in the highlight film. Uh, it obviously comes together a lot better with music and also audio from the wedding day which we captured today. So happy with these photos so far just for candid shots uh, they look like they're they've been set up. And just like kind of, again, working with whatever lighting conditions, it's bright, sunny, like 12 noon light. If I'm ever in bad lighting like this or just harsh lighting, uh, I do my best to go wide. I think wider shots work better, especially with nice blue sky. If it would have been an overcast day, I definitely would have been on my 7200 or something a lot closer. Uh, I think you can also, in video, you can get away with bad light a little bit better because things move and you actually have, I guess, perspective. Photography in bad light is just uh, is no fun for anyone. All right, moving into the ceremony, we have good light in here, thankfully, and we're just doing as many candids as we possibly can. We usually kind of sit up by the one of the windows. There's a lot of windows in here, so it makes it very easy. Um, but we stand near the window and photograph back into the room to kind of get the nicest light. And we kind of set ourselves up in an area that a lot of people are going to be coming through and interacting and smiling and being happy. Um, that way you can get a lot more great shots really fast rather than just kind of waiting for like one or two great ones. Uh, you can leave a session like that, like a five minute session with like 30 or 50 great images. 
I know that we're going to be needing a lot of video coverage because there is no photo session. So usually I would say my, my photo session takes at least a minute of a three minute edit. Uh, today we don't have that. So I'm having Tim pretty much roll on just like everything. Um, so this is the videos you're seeing are a compilation of myself and Tim. Uh, usually on these videos, it's just my stuff, but uh, I'm abusing Tim and pretending it's my own um, for the first time ever here on YouTube today. You'll notice that I shoot a lot of verticals uh, and it is one to kind of frame out unwanted elements. I don't want 150 faces in a shot like that. And two, I feel like it's just like, I don't know, it's a more slimming frame. Uh, I'm sure you're aware if you wear like wide stripes that you look a little bit wider. Um, so a horizontal frame I think is just not the most flattering. Um, but then it's primarily, I would say just to crop out unwanted people um, because one person looking the other way really does kind of break an image um, if they're not kind of involved in the exact scene of that shot. I do still shoot video clips of the like the must have. So pretty much like my idea of um, I guess like my backup is that if I leave the wedding day and Tim's like his card, like just something happens and I don't have any of his footage that I'm still able to put together a highlight film from my footage alone. Um, I think that's just like a good safety net that uh, everybody should have. I tend to have backups of backups of backups and if you're doing video coverage, you kind of want even more layers of backup. Uh, you want like a rolling camera to cut to. You want like at least three audio sources. If you're doing a ceremony, you want like a lav on the officiant or the groom if you can hide it and not uh, mess with their suit. Uh, you also want like a recorder actually getting the microphone feed from the officiant. And then you want a room mic as well. Um, just in case one of them fails or one of them comes in too hot or the wireless mic is breaking up. Um, there's all kinds of different variations to troubleshoot on a wedding day when you just have to make it work. Um, so there are a lot of, I guess, like stresses that come with video, but I think the stresses far outweigh the fact that you can tell an amazing story in three minutes that is completely engaging and gets people crying. Uh, it's been a long time since I've seen somebody flipping through an entire gallery of their wedding day images and like in like full out tears. But I've seen that happen a lot when it comes to actually videos that are delivered. You'll also notice you can't really tell the difference too much between my lens and Tim's lens. Tim's lens is the Generation 1 Tamron 7200, and mine is the 7200, the FL, the very surprisingly expensive one. For photography, it is a lot better, I think, the FL, uh, but for actual video coverage when you're manually focusing, uh, I really can't tell, especially at a 1080p frame, like a regular standard HD frame. Uh, there is, you, you just can't, you can't tell. So. I love working just with one other photographer. Like we've done this pretty much the same quality of video uh, from another team uh, that was not connected with us, but there was like three people on that team plus myself and a second photographer. I would way rather just have myself and Tim here to do both photo and video coverage. I feel like when you are doing photo and video, one, you're able to like shoot the correct amount of video for a highlight. I feel like whenever I'm hired for only video coverage, I just roll on everything and I come home with like two hours of footage. Um, when you're doing photo video coverage, you probably are gonna, going to come home with maybe like 15, 20 minutes of like video clips and to narrow that down into three minutes is actually um, like, I feel like it's almost perfect. Um, whereas when you come home from a full video coverage day, I probably have closer to like an hour and a half of content and to make that into a three and a half minute film is a lot more of a struggle. So again, starting really tight uh, at 200, um, which is kind of like my frame line, which is where Al, the officiant, kind of steps off to. Uh, and then as he kind of goes out more and more a frame, I'm kind of zooming out more to get a little bit wider of a frame. But for video, uh, obviously, it's a horizontal frame. So that's where we're at in the highlight. Here they come down the aisle. I'm on a 7200. Tim is on the Tamron 35 1.8. Uh, manual focusing Nikon cameras. Um, I would never trust autofocus, especially in a situation like this. Um, other camera manufacturers, I still would pretty much want to roll with manual focus when I'm doing video, only because I feel like it's a lot more organic, um, kind of like zooming in and out. And even if something is slightly out of frame or out of uh, focus, you're not getting like the hard, like focus looking like how it's just hunting like back and forth to try to find what's actually supposed to be focused. Um, as a human, you can kind of do it a little bit more naturally. That's that last shot is like the greatest lighting spot that I've found in quite some time. They basically made a studio. Here we are at cocktails with Tim. Tim, what is your strategy for the candid session up here on the rooftop? Um, candid stuff, I usually look for groups of two or more, otherwise just take a photo of like individual human beings and that's, that's kind of sad during cocktail hour when it's supposed to be a sociable hour. 
for a group of like three or five, and I'll do this move, this candid, patented move. Hey guys, what's going on? Do you want to take a quick photo? Great. Now do this. Awesome, thanks. <laughs> that is Timothy Musa as candid photographer extraordinaire. Here's a bunch of photos that Tim took while he was up here on the roof. Very nice, Tim. Thank you. Also, when people ask you for cell phone photos, I'm happy to do that. Uh, I also just grab one on my camera like Tim is about to do right here. And same kind of rules apply that if they ask for a photo, don't just like snap it really fast and just be like, eh, there you go. Um, actually spend the time to get a good photo on their phone. They're going to appreciate you. And hopefully maybe in the future, once they actually see your name on something uh, that they're going to remember uh, that you were the photographer and maybe that'll become one of your points of contact. Um, these are all my photos from uh, just lurking around with that 85 uh, 1.8 Tamron. I am a lot more comfortable doing this rather than actually just approaching groups. Um, I feel like I also kind of need somebody, so it makes this a lot easier when I do have Tim. You could see Tim kind of off to the side of the frame there. Um, when I have somebody to just kind of stand with and take these images rather than just being like clearly the photographer standing in the middle of the room alone. Um, so that is one of the benefits of having two photographers at cocktail hour, even though it might seem a little bit weird. This rooftop is a situation where all the JPEGs with D lighting high are going to be a lot better than the raw files. Right, Tim? Am I on the stitch line? I'm on the stitch line. Oh, you're on the stitch line. D lighting is a thing that Nikon has, and I love it for video because it really makes your videos pop in a way that um, even post processing, you, you could kind of get there, but it's way easier just to have the files just done in your camera and ready to edit. So coming in again, Tim is rolling video on everything and I'm doing photography, very mixed lighting and the band has purple lights up and we couldn't actually change them to white. Um, white was not an option within all of the, the controls, which is very strange. Um, so we went with purple, which was very challenging. It kind of works. I think it works okay in video in the photos. It just, it didn't really look that great. Um, and again, spending a lot of time doing as many candids as I can, uh, as well as a couple little pose group shots while the lighting is good. Cause I know at some point it's going to get really blue and it's going to get really bad. So um, do as much as you can in optimal conditions so you don't leave just feeling stressed out like you didn't get anything from the day because you're waiting for something that was more perfect. Um, when something's working, just, just go with it. Over the next couple of weeks, we're actually going to get into more off-camera flash. Uh, I have a new Godox system, so I'm excited to kind of show you guys that. For now, I really am relying on this big light that's kind of, or this big window that's behind me. Um, that's what lit that shot and it, the windows kind of off to the right there. Um, and again, like just using those like four windows that are creating amazing light, uh, making it look like a studio in here. But at some point that's going to go away. The last shots you just saw there are kind of my attempt to make some family photos, I guess, um, candid and naturally. Uh, so you just have to be super aware. Uh, usually I'm very aware, but today I was extra aware of absolutely everything that was happening whenever uh, Laura was talking to like any of her family members. I was always there to try to get a photo. All right, that's good. And everyone can come up so you're like nice and close together. Just make sure I can see your face and a little bit of your body so you're not just floating head. This is our two minute photo session. Uh, they're gonna pop some champagne as a wedding party. That's the photo. And then we're gonna do like five photos of them right after. Uh, everyone get really close together, like unreasonably close together. All right. That's good. And then everyone look at me for the first one here and just be happy with my existence. Thank you. All right, I think that worked out pretty well for having such a short period of time. Good light, good champagne pop. Take a few steps towards me just so you're not right up against the rail. That's good there. Perfect. All right, and you can just do like arm around each other and just smile and face me. Perfect. This is the entirety of their photo session. All right, let's get. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. All right, that's it. Back to the reception uh, where there are a lot more candid photographs waiting for us to take them. That was Tim rolling on that. Uh, he was really an integral part of today. If I wouldn't have had Tim to also be rolling video on things, it would have been very, very difficult for me to... Uh, I guess, make a full edit with such limited things happening kind of very, very quickly. Um, it's pretty much the hardest situation for doing highlight photo video coverage. I just want to talk about this photo for a quick second. We'll get more into this in the on-camera flash, off-camera flash section uh, in a couple of weeks. But all this is, is my flash bounced up 45 degrees behind me into a white wall and it comes down perfectly on them. Um, what you want to do is you want to expose for the actual room so that they're not just in a cavern of darkness. Um, and then you add flash to kind of balance that and to mix that in. And you can learn to do it really, really fast so that you can just kind of walk up to any white wall and use it as a big giant softbox. 
I don't have a purple gel to match my flash to purple lights, um, so I'm kind of doing the opposite where I'm kind of making them a little bit more white and letting the purple kind of wash in behind. I feel like it, it gives some good separation. Um, for video, again, like weird lighting does work. For photo, um, I feel like they almost stand out a little bit too much, but I kind of do like it. At this point of the day, I have my uh, camera set to AFS, and this is the only time of the day that I usually set my camera to AFS, and I have my little um, beacon on my flash. I'm actually holding my camera above my head here, and I can see where my flash beacon is hitting them, the little red dot. Um, so I'm taking these photos with that completely blind, but I know kind of where to aim my camera based on that and the fact that I know that I'm at 35. Uh, into the horror. Horrors are always like the most fun to photograph, but also the most challenging because it's like so exciting. And you have so much fun at the time. And you get home and you're like, oh, my photos 90% capture that. Uh, so I think that is kind of where video comes in as well, that video really does capture um, the full energy of the moment. And that's why I think that it's important. So here's the video. Hope that you enjoy. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. To my new husband. I have lived a life with more love and happiness than most people get to know in a whole lifetime. But being loved by you has been the greatest privilege I've ever known. many months I've been thinking more and more often about the chances of being here today. Having our two lives joined together is more than a one in a billion shot. And I, I, don't, I don't think I can plan for the whatevers and the what ifs, but whatever we have, whatever this is, if anyone can make it the distance, it's this love. I'm so proud to be your wife, and I will ask the rest of my life how I got so lucky.